a gaming controller is an expensive piece of hardware. Both the DualSense and Xbox wireless controllers now sit in the thousands of Rand range when looking to replace it. You should know how to protect your controller and its analog sticks from damage which may occur over time. Ever since the PlayStation 3 days when clicking in the L3 button to sprint became the normal thing to do, I have been using this method to prevent the shafts of the analog sticks from scratching and slowly getting damage from the constant click and rub of the inner mechanism. Think about it for a second. Every time you sprint in the game you have to click in the L3 button which moves it up and down ever so slightly against the rim. Fast forward a few months and you've done this thousands of times already and moved the analog up and down against the side. Over time this does more damage than you think. Firstly, you're slowly scraping away the plastic around the shaft of your stick. Secondly, the plastic then goes inside the controller and can build up in the device. If you look at your analog stick just under the rubber nub, you'll most likely see that it's been worn down and this has affected your sprint. Thankfully, there's a solution to this problem and it can be fixed by using some common household items. I use insulation tape and the method revolves around snipping a thin slice of it and wrapping it around the shaft of the analog stick. I found that using insulation tape is way more effective than sellotape. This is thanks to the adhesive being a lot stickier and the soft plastic surface lets the tape adjust to your movements too. I used to use sellotape but it often fell off after a few months or even weeks of gaming. So here is what you'll need to protect your analog sticks from damage. Black insulation tape. You can use whatever colour you want but the black blends in with the controller and that's why I like it. Also, scissors, tweezers, toothpicks and a ruler. The method is simple, you want to slice a piece of insulation tape off the roll and then slice that piece into a thin strip which can wrap around the analog shaft. The strip cannot be too thick or too long, it has to wrap around once and just slightly overlap the starting point. If it is too thick then it may touch the top or bottom and cause some friction when moving the stick. So the measurements need to be 35mm long by 5mm thin for both the Xbox controller and DualShock or DualSense. So here is the method for you to follow. Step 1. Slice the insulation tape into a short piece of tape. Step 2. Place it on the ruler and measure out the dimensions. Step 3. Cut the above dimensions and as a result you'll get a thin and slightly long piece of tape. Step 4. Pull your analog stick down with your thumb, grab the tape with your fingers and wrap it onto the shaft of the stick. Step 5. Use the tweezers to pull the one end around the shaft and stick it down. Step 6. Repeat the process for the other end. Step 7. Using the toothpick, adjust the tape if it needs to be cleaned off the top or the bottom. You can also use it to apply pressure to the whole shaft to make sure the tape is stuck across it. Step 8. Twirl your analog around to further stick the tape down. And then step 9. Repeat the process on the other stick. I apply the tape to both sticks just to prevent damage. Even if you aren't sprinting, the other stick will already have a white circle on the shaft which means it too can be damaged over time. It may feel strange for a day or so when sprinting but the insulation tape should form around the rim pretty nicely. Some tips to note, if your piece is too thick and it touches the top or bottom, it's not really a train smash. You see, only a small portion of the shaft comes into contact with the circle part of the analog so you can get away with it. Just make sure it's not so big that it flaps and may become loose after a while. Also, if you're not happy with how clean it looks, try again. Keep in mind that the more you use the stick, the more it will press the tape down and get neater over time. I know it may seem ratchet at first, but I've never had to replace a controller due to analog drifting or sticking issues thanks to this method. I hope it helps you. And that concludes our little trick to help prevent damage on your analog sticks. I hope you guys found this useful. If you do, comment down below and let us know. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed, please consider liking and subscribing. Until next time, farewell.